In this video, we will hear Neville Goddard discuss a very interesting topic. Neville says you were given two gifts that nothing else in the world, besides mankind has, and when you use these two gifts together, you become unstoppable. Let's see what they are and how to apply them. Neville said, as we control our inner talking, matching it to our fulfilled desires, we can lay aside all other processes. Then we simply act by clear imagination and intention. We imagine the wishful feeling and carry on mental conversations from that premise. The right inner speech is the speech that would be yours when you realize your ideal. In other words, it is the speech of fulfilled desire. Now you will understand how wise the ancient was when he told us in the Hermetica, there are two gifts which God has bestowed upon man alone and on no other mortal creature. These two are mind and speech, and the gift of mind and speech is equivalent to that of immortality. If a man uses these to get right, he will differ in nothing from the immortals, and when he quits his body, mind and speech would be his guides, and by them, he will be brought into the truth of the gods and the selves that have obtained bliss. Now there are only three things we need to remember. Number one, simply act with a clear imagination and intention. And there is no better approach to building a clear vision and intention than to focus your inner conversations. Stop them if they are argumentative or doubtful. Begin again. Take note of how strong this is and how pleasant it feels. Number two, you keep having mental discussions that assume we've already experienced and accomplished your goal. Creating mental conversations leads you past visualizing what you want, which is the most common mistake individuals make when working with Neville and into focusing on something that has happened once the wish has been granted. A discourse that implies it is already deowning places you in the state of the wish fulfilled. Number three, you bring your mind and your speech into perfect harmony. By constructing imaginal conversations like this, and it becomes a way of life once you do it often enough. Now it's time to hear Neville in his own words. I hope you enjoyed our simple introduction, and before moving on, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you like our daily uploads, and also make sure to listen carefully. See you in the next video. God the Father has given himself to us. When this gift is still to be realized in experience, it remains a goal to be attained. Now let us see how you and I who possess the gift, <clears throat> become aware of it. I absolutely believe 100% the statement of Shakespeare in As You Like It. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. <clears throat> he confines the parts to from the cradle to the grave, beginning with the little infant mewling and puking in his nurse's arm, and ends with the end where a doting man, <clears throat> pardon me, sands teeth, sands eyes, sands everything. But I'm going to expand that beyond this little section of time, from the cradle to the grave. Because I speak from experience. I'll go along with Blake. I behold the visions of my dead and sleep of 6,000 years. Dazzling around thy skirts like a serpent of precious stones and gold. <clears throat> I know the what myself, O oh my Creator and Redeemer. Now here we take a play and try to follow me closely with this play. <coughs> I tell you it is true. Judge not the play until the play is done. The last act crowns the play. The last act we call Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the very center, <clears throat> the way in Judaism, the way out of bondage, into liberty. Now think of a play in this form. Think of a vast play, 6,000 years. <clears throat> the whole
everything is scattered. And you think they must begin at one point and come to an end in one linear motion. But think of the entire play as taking place. Think of it as something that is taking place absolutely and continuously. <clears throat> A play without reference to duration, to repetition, to position in time. Just think of it. It's taking place. <clears throat> and in the end, when you're crowned, Having gone through all the parts, you played every part. Then the scattered play in time, portions of it are brought into one wonderful state. A portion in Genesis, <coughs> pardon me, that took place, if you read the play chronologically, thousands of years ago. And two angels came to the house of Lot. And Lot received them into his house. And then the men on the outside knocked on the door and demanded the one who was on the inside, the stranger. <clears throat> Lot pleaded with them not to take the man. But he had two virgin daughters. Take them instead, but not the stranger in my house. They demanded the stranger in the house, not knowing the stranger was a messenger from God. <clears throat> and a messenger from God is God. I, who am sent, I am one with the sender. If you see me, the saint, you see the one who sent me. And he was sent by God the Father with the power and the wisdom to do anything on earth. And so they insisted <clears throat> on the man, not knowing who he was. And the man took a uh, lot. <clears throat> By the way, the word lot means to veil, to conceal, to wrap. So he took Lot by the neck and pulled him into the house and closed the door, then blinded all those who saw it, so they could not find the door. It is telling you that Lot is re not revealing, he is concealing a great secret. The word lot means to veil, to cover, to conceal a great secret. So behind the story there is a secret. On the outside the men are seeking a man rather than a woman. It is telling you they are homosexual. That's what the story is telling you. It is the story of Sodom. And then comes the power from within. And he blessed the city and brought down fire and brimstone and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We have the word today, Sodom, as Sodomy, which is simply homosexuality. Here the whole thing was destroyed because they insisted on the stranger not knowing the stranger was the one sent from God. <clears throat> that is a foreshadow. Just a shadow of things to come. When you come to the end, here is a story told thousands of years before. It's linked to a story told thousands of years later, and then linked to a story told another thousand years. Here we take this story, and prior to that, which is the 19th chapter of Genesis, I've just spoken. We go back and we take the story of Abraham. And he was sitting in the tent, the door of the tent, 
when suddenly three men appear before him. He didn't see them approaching. They suddenly appeared and announced the birth of a son. He couldn't believe it. He was too old and Sarah was too old. It was the announcement. You take that story, you take the story of the homosexuality, then we jump 1,000 years into the story told in Samuel. And the story of Samuel. Here is a lad who refused to wear the armament of men. They gave him the sword, the shield, everything. He said, I cannot wear these. And he went unarmed, only armed with the grace of God. A youth, a young lad, his name was David. He took five stones and went forward to meet the giant who would destroy, if he could, destroy Israel. And when he saw the youth, he laughed. This ridiculous little thing coming toward him. And David said to him, this day, the Lord of Israel, who goes with me, will deliver you into my hands. And I will sever your head and feed your carcass to the fowls of the air. <clears throat> and that day, one stone went through the forest, and he fell. He had no sword of his own, so he took the sword from him. Goliath and severed his head and then threw the garment to the fowls of the air and brought the head into the presence of the king who had promised to set his father free if he destroyed the enemy of Israel. <clears throat> For anyone who destroyed the enemy of Israel, his father would be set free. Now you take these stories now we go into the New Testament, which is another jump of a thousand years. What think ye of the Christ? Whose son is he? And they answered the son, son of David. He said, How then did David in the spirit call him my Lord? If David in the spirit called him my Lord, how can he be David's son? And they asked him no more. 